are tuning in with me, congratulations for becoming one of my very first Patreon subscribers to my new virtual shelling network. I am so super excited for this, you guys. Um, I know that a lot of you have been requesting more consistent content and footage and videos, and I wanted to do that for you guys, and this is a way that I can. And so um, I'm gonna try to get out here as often as I can to bring you footage from the beach, shelling, wildlife. Here's some pelicans feeding. Tide is going out. Sun is still up there, but it's gonna be going down. A little friendly, friendly seagull hanging out with us. So, um, ooh, here we go. Let's see if we can get some, some feeding footage here. Maybe not. I love watching pelicans fly. They're so graceful. How pretty is that? Trying to see if he's gonna, he's gonna find some dinner. Funny, you never really know when they're gonna when they're gonna see something and head into the water. All right, well, we'll catch up with them down there. So uh, the water is still a little, it's a little bit breezy and the waves are a little bit, um, not too strong, but you'll see that the only visibility real problem that we have going on is the seaweed here. There's lots of seaweed. So that kind of makes it difficult to see the break line here. And you guys know this is like my favorite place to shell. Um, so the other places that I like to shell is kind of what I call the fresh rack line here. And then the rack lines up where you can see the tide came in really high over the last couple days. So I'm just gonna kind of check out the break line and see the bugs were really bad um, out here the last couple nights. So I actually brought yoga pants so let me roll them up a little bit so I don't get my pants all soaked and wet, but and let's kind of see if we can see anything through all of this crazy, crazy seaweed. And we might have to go up a little further to see if we can have um, a little bit more clarity. The water itself is very clear, but it makes it a little bit hard, hard to see. Look at these little, these little guys running. So, for those of you who don't know, I grew up on Marco Island. Similar to Sanibel, bigger island, further south, about an hour or so. Um, I grew up on the beach, I was very fortunate um, to, to be able to go to the beach and start shelling at a very, very young age. And I love the beach, and I love the waves, and I love the, the, just, the just everything about the beach from the water to the shells to the wildlife. Um, I, I just absolutely love it. And one of the things that I found very difficult was when I, you know, I went to school at University of Florida, kind of in the middle um, northern part of the state. So, you know, we didn't really have any beaches up there and I really missed the beach. And of course, when I met Barry um, a few years ago, you know, we lived up in Maryland and we were able to go to the beach up in Maryland. I did do some videos up there. But it wasn't really the same for me. I really did miss shelling and I missed the Florida beaches. So I completely understand for those of you that are landlocked, I've been there. For those of you that, you know, in, in this instance, particularly this month, who are supposed to be down here on vacation and and you couldn't get here, I, I get that. So my goal is to be able to at least bring a little bit of the beach to you via video, via the sights and sounds of the waves and the water, and via a subscription box of shells delivered to your door every month. Um, I know that I would have loved that. I know that I still do love that. I still love shells. I still get shell mail sometimes. I have a couple friends that we trade shells and send each other shells and it's always really fun to get shell mail. So, so that is an awesome option for some of you. Um, 
who don't get to the beach or who didn't get down here on vacation. So if you're interested in that, definitely take advantage. So I'm going to come up on the beach a little bit. Woo! There must be some fish there. And we're going to come up, if you guys can see, not a whole lot of activity. But if you can see right here, this is kind of where water started a little tide pool and it dried up. But at the end of the tide pool, sometimes you'll find a little shell pile right here. And this is sometimes a great little place to look for some shells. There's some little slipper shells in here. Look at all the little slipper shells. So many little slipper shells. The fun thing about slipper shells too, so I used to call them Indian boats when I was little. Either one is fine, but I used to see they look like this Indian boats, but some people say they look like this and like you put your foot in there and it's like a little slipper. But the fun thing about them is they have different patterns. So I'm gonna put them up like this so you guys can see. Some of them will have like stripes and some of them will be kind of spotted. You can see this one, look how cool this one is. And these make fun little craft projects too. I think it's kind of like an overlooked shell, if you will. So this one's got some little spots on it too. I'm just gonna put, oh, here's kind of a, kind of a larger one here. So I'm just gonna put like a little variety of them. Here's like a darker one here. So you guys can kind of see all the little different Indian boat variations, if you will. And they come in all different sizes. Here's one that kind of has texture. It's not as smooth. Okay, that's kind of cool. So put that one here. So, you know, don't, don't think about shelling as just finding, you know, specific shells that you think that you're looking for. Find shells that you normally wouldn't look for. Um, oh, look at this. Murax. Wow, look at that nice dark color on that. So, do you guys see how it's kind of white and kind of dull? When we get home, I'm going to take some mineral oil and this will just come to life and it'll just bring out that nice dark color and shine it up and it'll be super pretty. Check the color on that one. Look how pretty. Oh, and look at this. There's a nice pretty little yellow coquina too. I love coquinas. I mean, coquinas are one of those those shells that I, I feel like I can always collect. There's another one right here. Look at the little peach one. Little peach coquina. Let's see if I can find some other little coquinas to show you little color variations. There's a purple one. So we got some Easter colors going on for the holiday. So that works out great. Here's a little See, here's a little light yellow one here. A little Easter egg coquina. Um, here's the coquina here. It's got some pattern to it. There. And then I've got another pink one here. And this is just in one little area. Here's a pretty blue one. I mean, look how pretty. Oh, there's a white one right here. Oops right here sitting next to it. I didn't even see that one. A little white one sitting right there. And here is one that's intact. So we'll put that here. So you've got a nice little coquina collection going on without even having to go too far. And then right up here is a cute little button shell. I don't really find too many button shells that aren't broken. So I love buttons. Look how cute that one is. That's a really pretty one. And then right here, you can zoom in as a cute little baby scallop shell. Let's see if I can get them on my finger. Look how cute that one is. Adorable. And here's a little baby mussel. Little mussel. And sometimes when you flip them over, they're like that iridescent. Can you guys see that iridescence underneath? So that's really pretty too. And then I'm just gonna take a step down and kind of see what we got down here. So this is kind of like a, 
you know, one of these shell piles that you kind of got to crouch down a minute and you just kind of got to look down. Here's another really pretty little intact coquina. And this one, let's see if I can put it on the shell right here. It's beautifully striped. Look how pretty that one is. Oh, and there's another one right here too. Sometimes they're a little bit fragile sometimes, especially when they get dried out. So when they're sitting out here out of the water, let's try to make sure to look how pretty they are. And so guys, like these are the types of shells that you're going to be receiving in your monthly beach treasure boxes. Let's see what else we can find up here. Oh, here's a serif. Look how pretty this little serif is. And what you do with your shells is up to you. I mean, putting them in a fun little bowl, like a little display bowl. Um, you can use them for crafting, you know, take all the coquinas that you get in all of your boxes each month and make some, make some butterfly arrangements with them. You can make shadow boxes. There's so many fun things that you can do with all of the shells that you receive. So I'm hoping that you guys have a lot of fun. Oh, here's a really pretty yellow coquina. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. And all I'm doing is just sitting here in this little shell pile. I see another little bogger up here. Let me see if I can grab this one. These make great snowman noses for Christmas ornaments. Paint these orange, and then you've got a great little snowman nose. So this is the little area that I've been kind of looking in. Oh, here's another cute little. little area it's not a very big area of shells there's really nothing this way and there's not a whole lot this way but just this little shell pile right here and I could probably stay in this pile for like an hour and just kind of comb through and look through all the fun the fun shells oh look at this one so pretty you guys see that one with like the little dark edge on it Another one that's intact. That one's really pretty. Let's put that one up too. Let's see if this one, this one's together. I don't know if it's empty, so let's see if it's empty. Yep, it's empty. Just full of some sand. Ooh, that's a pretty one. Let's take that one home with us. Oh, and look at this little one up here. Look at that little tiny. I know a lot of you are going to be hoping you get some tinies in your beach treasure boxes. Don't worry, some of you will be getting some tinies too. I love the tinies. And here's a really pretty pink jewelry box. Oh, that's a really pretty pink one. It's got a little hole on it, but look at the color underneath. That one's beautiful. Let's see what else. Oh, here's a really cute kitten paw. Any kitten paw fan? fans out there. Somebody in my um, Seashell Beach and Craft Decor group on Facebook had posted a Christmas tree that she made out of kitten's paws and it was the, the coolest thing and it was so unique and pretty and fun and it makes me want to go out and collect all the kitten paws to create one myself. It was so cool. Very, very well done. So yeah, just a bunch of fun, fun little shells. In this just little pile right here. Ooh, what is this? It's a bright little pink one. So it's really kind of cool because it doesn't look like much on this side, but then you flip it over and it's like bright pink in there. Look how pretty. It's got some sand, but look how bright. That's pretty. Love me some bright pink. Another coquina. I love it when I find them they're intact like that. I love that. And I will do a video as well for you guys on how to preserve your coquinas when they're intact. There are certain days that I come out here and I only look for coquinas. So I'll bring one of my small shell bags and I'll only look for coquinas. I will focus on coquinas 
and I will try to collect all of the intact coquina butterfly shells like this. They make such great craft projects. And when you, when you have like a, a goal like that, you come out with a specific shell in mind and that's what you're out to look for, all of a sudden you'll start seeing them everywhere. All of a sudden they'll start popping up and you'll be like, oh my gosh, here's another one, right? Look how cute. Beautiful little white lavender one. So sometimes you just have to come out here with the intention of, I'm gonna look for coquinas today. So as we walk down this way, this will be a really good example of the rack lines. You can clearly see them. You kind of have one, two, three, you can have four up here. So these are all really good places for you to kind of look for different shells and different, I'll call them beach treasure items. Because again, beach treasures doesn't necessarily mean just seashells. It can be sea life. It can be driftwood. I know I got some driftwood fans in this group. It can be beach stones. It can be sea glass. It can be sea life, like a crab claw. Um, here's a piece of sea pork. We've been seeing a lot of pieces of sea pork lately. So this is kind of an area where I call it like dirty and junky with seaweed. And this is always kind of a fun area to look for those types of items. You might not always find the shells here, but if you're looking for the egg casings, oh, I bet some of you might like some pieces of egg casings, right? Oh, and here, what do we have here? What do we have here? I wonder if you guys know what this is. Anybody know what this is? Let me try to get the sand out of it. Any idea what this is? No, we have another piece right here. Look at this. Any ideas? These are pieces of sea turtle eggs. So these probably get just washed up when sea turtles lay their nests up on these beaches. They usually lay them up here, but sometimes they lay them in this area. And then they end up hatching, which is great, and then they get washed out. Um, when the tide comes in like this and some of those shells will get uncovered and the shells, you know, get float around and then they, they get washed back up ashore. Um, if you find one of them, just keep in mind, here's another one, I believe. Yep, here's another one. So there must have been a nest right around here somewhere. Keep in mind that because the sea turtles are protected, any part of the sea turtle is also protected, including the eggshell, okay? So you're not allowed to take the eggshell, even though I know, even though it's just a shell and it's basically garbage trash and it's just laid on the beach, unfortunately, because it's an endangered and protected species, um, they call it a, like a byproduct, you are not allowed to remove it from the beach. It's the same thing as if you were to find um, a bald eagle feather because it's a protected and endangered species. You're not allowed to even take that feather. You can't possess that feather. Um, if you found a gopher tortoise shell and it was, you know, a dead, dead turtle and just the shell was there, same thing because it's protected, you're not allowed to take it. So that's a little tip for you guys. I don't make the rules, I just, educate on them. Here's a really pretty giant heart cockle. I love these. I do. I think that they're so pretty. They have color, they have pattern, they have size, and they're really fun in a bowl. Um, they make great Christmas ornaments. They make great shells to paint on, so you can paint this whole thing white or whatever color, and then hide the shell if you're in the Sandoval Shells group. Um, that's a really fun group to be in if you like to paint shells. Here's a really cool piece of driftwood. Somebody's gonna have to get this one in their, their bag or their box. Look how cool. 
And do you guys remember how I told you what makes these little holes? The little clams that make the little holes in the driftwood. So somebody's gonna get this piece of driftwood for sure in their monthly beach treasure box. So that'll be fun. I promise you guys are gonna love your boxes. They're gonna be super fun. I can't wait to see what you all get. I'm gonna have them all pre-made, so I won't even know who gets what. It's always exciting for me too. Ooh, what's this? Is this a sponge? This is a sponge. Here's the thing about sponges. They're very stinky. Um, sometimes they're very bright on the beach, but when they dry out, they're not so bright. If you want to take a sponge, understand it is going to stink to high heaven. So you need to put it in a place where it can completely air dry and completely air dry, like completely air dry, not in your house, not in your garage, somewhere outside where a wild animal is not going to pick it up and carry it away. Um, and it might not retain that bright orange color, but you have the option of spray painting it. I know some people are like, I don't want to spray paint it. I like it natural and that's fine too. But just understand that if you do take a piece of sponge, you must let it dry out completely. You can rinse it in fresh water, but do not bleach it. Bleach will disintegrate a sponge. And if you are one of the few people that have done that and you didn't have your sponge disintegrated, that's great, but it, it will disintegrate your sponge. So no need to bleach it. Just let rinse it in fresh water, wring it out as much as you can, and then let it just, look at that scallop, guys. That's beautiful and then let it just dry out completely. And then you can stick it on a shelf or put it in a bowl or display it or glue it on a board, whatever you're gonna do as a craft, um, enjoy it. Or you can spray paint it to be a bright orange color or whatever color you would like. So I love going through kind of seaweed and stuff like that. I've said that before. It's kind of hard because the water's all the way down here and there's stuff here, but there's stuff up here, and there's even stuff up here. So trust me when I say, like, there's a lot of beach to cover sometimes. So I like to just kind of pick a spot, walk along, see what you find, see what you see. All right, guys, I'm gonna come down and look down here, closer to the water. Um, sometimes you'll, they're just going to be kind of like scattered shells around. Oh my gosh, I call these elephant ears when I was a kid. These were like one of my favorite shells. Aren't they cool? Sometimes you find them intact. Not super often, but every once in a while. Oh, here's a really pretty scallop too. Look how pretty this one is. Got a little, little barnacle on there, but that'll come off with a little bit of bleach and a dental pick. There's another little piece of a sea turtle eggshell there. So there definitely are some nests that are starting to wash up a little bit. And every once in a while, you'll come across a bone. Um, this is a, a piece of a hook. Um, and a lot of people will say, you know, where do these bones or these hoofs come from? Um, and actually they are from crab traps. So they'll take feet from cows or pigs and put them inside crab traps as bait for crabs. And then, you know, once the crabs eat off all the meat, then the bones fall out of the traps and then wash up on the beach. So if anybody's wondering, you know, why there's sometimes bones that wash up, that is why. Here's some of the pretty little heart cockle. Let's see if we can find any fun little shells down here. And it's kind of hard. It's kind of like a, like a little, almost like an Easter egg hunt since we're in the, in the week of Easter here. You kind of got to hunt for, hunt for your shells. Because sometimes they are hiding amongst the seaweed and amongst the other, the other shells. And I'm just trying to kind of walk a little bit slow so you guys can see what I'm seeing. Maybe this is, let me turn around so you guys can see the beautiful sunset too. Look how pretty. It's just a very beautiful night here. On Sanibel. 
And I know some of you are gonna wanna be curious about the tide pool and it's not, not very much to see up here, just some, just some seaweed in here, not really anything um, very clear, um, but just not a whole lot to see as far as like shells or anything else go in, in the tide pool. Sometimes the tide pools will be, you know, filled with shells and some fun things, but this one just, just seems to be filled with some beach trash. Just some seaweed and parchment worm casings and miscellaneous um, vegetation and things like that. So I really don't see anything super crazy up here. But we are working our way down to Lighthouse. So I'm going to walk down a little bit further and then when I get down there I will be back. Alright guys, I'm going to come down. The water is getting a little bit more um, calm and you can see they have this roped off up here. Um, as a preserve for some birds and then you can kind of see here um, is the end of like the kind of the rack line so we're going to kind of hang out down here a little bit um, and this is a really good area too because um, again there is a lot of seaweed so I'm kind of just going to stay up here where I can see a little bit better but this is going to be a really good area because a lot of the shells are going to wash up um, up here and then I can keep my eye um, on the rack line too so here these are awesome shells too to paint. Okay, this one has them to be a bivalve, but they're really smooth and they're a decent size. So if you guys are um, into the Sanibel shells group, those are a good one um, to get to paint too. And I just saw some color in here. So let me see. I saw a little bit of color right here. Look at this pretty little juvenile biting conch. I'm sure nobody's home in there. Super pretty. So I'm going to stick him in my shell bag. And then I think I saw another. Ooh, this is a good little spot right here. This is a good little area. A little activity. I saw an olive rolling. But I think it's a kind of a beat up olive, but I still saw it rolling around. So you want to make sure that you're looking for color. It's a cute little, is this an albino? No, not quite. It's just super light. You see how it has that stripe right there? Not an albino, but a super white little juvenile fighting conch. But this is a great little spot right here. So if you had a scooper, you could scoop up some of these shells and take them up on the beach. There's a little little apple murex right here. Look at that little guy. This is perfect. Beautiful. And here's another little, wow, look at the dark. Oops, and here's an olive. Got a little tufa right here. Look how pretty. Nice and dark and pretty. And is that a tulip I see? Did I see that tulip? Where did it go? Oh, I think it's broken. It's an inside of a tulip. So this is a great little hot spot for shells. So I'm just trying to take a peek and see. Here's a little murex, a little broken, but still really pretty. So sometimes the broken shells, I know we always say broken shells are still pretty, but they also make good craft shells, especially for like a shell mirror. Let me tell you something, guys. When you're making a shell mirror, like, oh my gosh, it takes so many seashells to make a shell mirror. And all of a sudden, you're like running out of shells. And they make nice fillers because you can turn them a certain way and you don't really realize they're broken. And because they're going to be glued down, you don't have to worry about that. So, we got, ooh, one, two, three. Oh, I missed it. One, two, three. One, two, three, look at that. Two little juvenile fighting conks and an apple murex. Fun, fun. Look at that. Let's see what else we got here. What are you guys seeing? Do you guys see anything? I know you guys always can see sometimes some things that I don't see. Here's another little olive right here. Pretty one, nice light olive. 
And you guys see how I mean, like, down here, there's a lot of seaweed. You just have to kind of wait. There's still seaweed, but it's not right in my brake line. So hopefully you guys can see the difference because I have visibility now. The water is very, very clear. I just needed a little bit of visibility so I could see. There's a little juvenile fighting conch right here. Really cute one. Is this it right here? Yeah, look how cute. Perfect little point on that one. Make sure nobody's home inside. Oh, look at that big whelk. Do you guys see that big whelk right there? Woo-wee! Look how pretty. A little beat up, but look how pretty that one is. Very cool. Let's see what we got. I love how clear the water is. There's another olive. Can you guys spot the olive right here? I love olives. Like, I love olives. Missing a little, little tip there. Still really pretty. I'm an olive fan for sure. So I'm watching for color. Watching for shells rolling. Is that a cone? A little tiny cone? I saw it. Let's see if we can see it right here. Little cone. Look how cute. Little cone right there. Adorable. Oh, look at the coquinas. Do you guys see that bright yellow coquina? Right here, look how pretty. Look at that one. A little bit of green, but that'll come off with a little bit of bleach. Love that. Nice yellow butterfly. Oh, I'm gonna come up real quick and turn around so you guys can see the sunset. Never looks quite as good on my phone as it does in real life. Kinda hiding behind the cloud there. It's always hard at the end of the day when low tide's at the end of the day and the water's really clear and the shelling's really good and then you start to lose your light. And you're like, no! <laughs> and it starts to become really hard to shell. Look at that one's really pretty. So all this stuff that I'm collecting is gonna be going into beach treasure boxes. So if you haven't subscribed, you can do so. They will be all shipped out first week of the month. So they will be going out the first week of May. Look how pretty. And I'm so super excited to get these off to you guys. And bring a little, bring a little bit of the beach to you. So excited. And I can't wait to see what you guys do with your shells, if you do craft projects, or you're like me. I mean, Barry and I just, we have little bowls of shells all over our house. We have little bowls in the bathroom. I see that one floating there. Little bowls in the bathroom. We have little bowls in the entranceway, in the kitchen. We just love having shells all over the place. So... I mean, shells just make us happy. Shells and sea glass, a little bit of the beach in your home. It's kind of like house plants. I don't know. There's something about having like a house plant. You know, it just it just makes you happy. It's just like a happy thing. And there's another big whelk. It looks a little bit beat up though, but a little bit beat up whelk. Then tossed around a little bit. We all have these days, right guys? <laughs> we understand how you feel, Well, We understand. We get it. We're all a little bit tossed around and beat up. Oh, I just love how clear the water is. It's just perfect for shelling the brake line, which is my favorite place to shell. And keep in mind that if you are not somebody who either wants to be in the water or maybe you can't be in the water, that's okay too. You, there are, trust me when I say there are plenty of shells up here that you can still find. Oh, here's a nice little, oh, I missed it. Did I miss it? It was white. It looked like a little white, possibly albino. I 
love albino shells, by the way. It's hard to find some true albino shells. A lot of them are just like bleached or out or like just really light. But every once in a while you do find a true albino um, whelk or horse conch or juvenile fighting conch, which is what I thought that I saw just now. And they're just really cool because they're just so pure white. Heaven knows if I will ever find that, but ooh, there's another little tiny. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, did you guys see that? There was a shark eye too. Oh, here it is. Oh, look at this. Look at the shark eye. Wow. Look at that one, you guys. Who's gonna get this one? Wow. That is one cool looking cat. Look at that. I love this shark eye, you guys. Look, can you guys see that? Okay, that one's really cool. All right, well, somebody's getting it. And here's the next olive. I have that olive. A little olive. Oh, and what was that little orange thing? Did anybody else see that? Let me just grab a handful. Oh, it's broken. Oh, well. It's like a little piece of the horse tongue. Oh, baby so you have to kind of develop an eye for it everybody kind of always asks me that question they're like how do you see that stuff and you just have to develop an eye for what you're looking for and then you have to have that reflex of being able to kind of just get your hand down there that was a really pretty coquina too Let's see if I can grab that one look how pretty this one is seaweed on there look how pretty that coquina is that's a pretty one. Rinse my hand off there. So we're getting a little, little bit back into Seaweed City here. The seaweed's trying to come in, kind of making it a little bit hard to see. Oh, this would have been a pretty one. Look at that pretty blue. Hmm. if I can walk up here a little bit past, past the seaweed. And see what else we can find here in the break line. And there's another pretty little cockle. Turn around really quick so you guys can see the sun. You guys can see that? Wow, it's so pretty. So beautiful. I don't know if we're actually going to get to Lighthouse because this is what happens when you find good shelling. You can see the light going on and off in the Lighthouse. And you just want to keep shelling. You don't want to stop. You want to keep going. Especially when the water is clear and you have light. And you're looking. And you're finding some good stuff. And it's so hard to tear yourself away. So I get it. Getting into some seaweed again. Darn it. Ooh, there looks like a spot right here. So it looks like there's a fighting Kong. Got a hole in it. But there was also a little well there. And oh, I lost it. There was something else to see what it was. and all the seaweed. All right, well, let's go 
and switch because it's just kind of getting hard to see here. So let's turn up and we're just going to kind of walk up here. So as I was saying, for those of you who, oh, let me show you the sunset again real quick. Start to go behind the building. How pretty. Gorgeous. So for those of you who might not want to be in the water, or you can't be in the water, can't get your feet wet, um, there's always going to be shells up here that you can find. There's always going to be really pretty scallops, beautiful pink, gorgeous scallops. Okay. You just have to maybe just, well, I was going to say, you might have to look a little harder, but you might actually not have to look as hard because you're not fighting the water. And ooh, there's a really nice big scallop here right here. That'll be really pretty cleaned up. Put that one in there too. And here's another one that'll be really nice to use for some shell painting. Many of you are shell painters. Mix that out when we get home. Let's see what else we can find. keep checking out to look for um, dolphins too because this is a good a good time of evening sometimes we'll find some dolphins eating or playing um, especially at this end of the island this is a really common place to see some dolphins but I don't see any tonight at least not yet but I am looking Ooh, look at this pretty scallop right here. Wow. Big and pink and beautiful. Let's rinse this baby off. How oh, pretty. Wow. Love it. Love scallops. There's a little crab shell here. We are getting closer to Lighthouse. I'm just gonna come back down um, since the seaweed's not too bad here and see if we can get any more any more shells um, right here in the break line um, before we lose all of our light. So I'm just gonna kinda hang out here for a minute and see if we can see anything else. But please let me know um, how you like this video as my first, ooh, look at this coming up here video of my virtual shelling network the first official video and also i'm happy to take video requests i can't promise that i'll be able to fulfill all of them right away um, but i am always looking for feedback and suggestions on what you all like what you like to see what you want to see more of um, I, so I'm definitely open to suggestions and ideas. I absolutely love helping you all um, learn how to shell and teaching you about shells and how to find them and the beaches and the water and the sea life and all the things. So you just guys keep the feedback coming on what you like, um, what you love, and what you want to see more of. And I will do my very best to accommodate. I definitely am planning on some really fun things for you guys especially this summer so that'll be really exciting Ooh, this is a really pretty scallop look at that one so it has a little bit of green on it just some algae but that green will come off with some bleach and then you'll just be left with a nice white scallop with some pink on there which is like super pretty I feel like there's a ton of stuff in here and it's just so seaweedy that I can't see. I need to take like one of those nets and just get rid of all of the seaweed and then I would be able to see so much better. 
and it takes a little bit of patience to shell, especially when it's getting drunk outside and there's seaweed. Kind of like the other night when I was shelling and oh my gosh, it was just, it was just absolutely crazy with the crazy waves. I mean, it was so rough and I just couldn't see and I was trying so hard. So sometimes you just have to take it take it as a day that's not going to be as, as good a shelling as another day might be, but like I said, just try your best to enjoy the beach and the waves and the sea life and the sand between your toes. I thought I saw something kind of interesting there, but I don't anymore. There's another pelican soaring by. We are almost the lighthouse. I'm determined to get you guys up close and personal with Lighthouse Point this evening. So the public beaches are still closed as far as parking goes. Um, so you're you're able to walk on the beach from your condo or if you oh, there's a little paper thing I think. Let's see if I can grab it real quick. You see it. Oh, rats. Oh, and there's a little blue coquina too. It's like I see stuff and then and then it's gone. Look how pretty this one is though. Wow, that'll be beautiful. Love that one. I don't know where the little paper thing went though. It was little. Uh, anyway, so you if you're a resident, you can park at the resident beaches with a sticker. If you're staying on the island, you can walk or bike to any of the beaches. You just can't park um, at them if you're not a resident. And you cannot go on the causeway. The causeway is completely closed still. So you can't park or anything. So, and then of course following that social distancing rule. No groups of 10 or more. Here's a nice buttercup. Love buttercups too. Some of them are more orange on the inside than others, or um, yellow, I'm sorry, on the inside than others, but I still do love to pick those up. A bunch of seaweed here. And let me show you guys, we're getting up to Lighthouse. And there it is. And it's so fun. There's Barry ahead of me, Shellen. Let me get caught up and see what he's got going on. Here looks like a little sand dollar, guys. I always say, as we get close to Lighthouse, this is where all the sea life is. So we haven't we haven't done a little video on sand dollars in a while. We haven't we haven't found any, but this one is nice and dark. And a lot of people have a hard time telling if a sand dollar is alive or not. Um, but the best thing to do is to flip them over. And then I'm gonna try to hold him really still so you guys can maybe see his little feet moving. I'm gonna try to hold really still. Can you guys see his little feet like right here? And over here will be moving. Kinda hard to see and you gotta look really close. But that's how you know that they're alive. They've got their little feet moving. You see them in the middle here. And that's how you know this little sand dollar is alive and well. And he is fuzzy. If you can see, he's very fuzzy. With his little feet. So we're going to send him back in the water. And I always try to place them back in so they don't fall upside down and also so they don't break. I've seen some people kind of fling them like frisbees and you don't want to do that because number one, they can break when they hit the water and then number two, um, you don't want them to land upside down. If they happen to land upside down, they'll be, they'll be fine, but try to just place them back in the water if you can. That is the best way to to put them back in their home where they belong. But as we always get closer to Lighthouse here, I mean, honestly, 
the sea life is usually fantastic and it can be good and bad like I said the other night you know you might not find the best shells to take home because a lot of the shells may be alive um, but you might find a lot of shells to take pictures of because you might find some you know big live whelks or big live horse conks or starfish or sand dollars or whatever oh my gosh look what has been found you guys look how cute little paper figs and they're so little and so adorable who is going to be getting a little baby paper fig Oh my gosh, in their Peach Treasure Box subscription next month. Those are so cute. Mm, love paper things. And those are really cute ones too. Lovely color on those. And if anybody is interested, the sun is completely set and the bugs are killing us. So we're gonna wrap up this video. We're almost to Lighthouse. And I'm just gonna pan in really quick because we're literally getting attacked by bugs. Barry's like out of here. He's like, I am so out of here. There's the lighthouse. And we're gonna lose our lighting. So and you guys can see what it looks like. We're not gonna get all the way quite there. But when I say we are getting attacked, and I mean like, holy moly, you guys. Can you even see them swarming? The, the mosquitoes. Oh my gosh, you guys, can you see them? I don't know if you can see them, but they're like, they're like swarming. Okay, so let me know what you guys thought of this video. I'm super excited. Thank you guys so, so much for your support, for becoming a Patreon of, of, of my channel, my new awesome virtual shelling network. I'm so excited to be bringing shelling to you and a little piece of the beach right to your front door. I will see you again very, very soon.